So it was mentioned in the comments from the last video that, uh, well, I was just asked why I didn't paint these bits and I, did I just didn't think about it really, to be honest. I thought they looked okay, but I guess with a lick of paint, they'll look even better. So I'm going to do that. I got a couple of comments suggesting that I forgot to grease up the bearings. Uh, um, I, I did do it off camera, but I didn't actually use the right grease in everyone else's defense. So. I used, I don't know where I put it now, I used like multi-purpose grease, but I've actually now gone out and got some uh, molybdenum disulfide grease. Uh, I know it says CV lith molly grease, but inside it does have molybdenum disulfide, which is what the service manual recommends. So don't worry, I will be re-greasing all the bearings with the correct grease um, and yeah, happy days. There we go. They look much better, right? Um, I masked up the bearings so that I didn't get paint in them. See, smart cookie. Now I'm going to put the put it all back together because obviously I had to take it all apart again. Put it all back together and talk everything up correctly. I want to give a massive shout out to Steve. He has sent me this manual for uh, the bike. It's an original manual and it will go nicely underneath the seat where that compartment was in one of the... I think the first video I did, I found this little flap underneath the seat and I was like, oh, what's that for? It is for this. <laughs> So thanks, Steve. Uh, see, I'm greasing the bearings. I have torqued up the bolt that holds in the top of the shock absorber to 29 newton meters, which is what the service manual says. Not the Haynes manual, the service manual. Is it supposed to be loose like that? Tell you what, 88 newton meters for the swing arm bolt is actually quite a lot. Uh, took a lot of effort. Um, I probably should have used my larger torque wrench, but I didn't. I used this, I don't know, medium sized one. Uh, but anyway, we're all done now, and I think we'll all agree that the comments suggesting that I paint those uh, other suspension components were absolutely right. It looks 10 times better now, so thanks. <laughs> As a bit of a finishing touch to the swing arm, I'm going to pop this plastic bit on that is, uh, well, it's part of this. Like so. Just finishes it off nicely, I think. If you decide to clean your parts with a toothbrush and um, car cleaner, uh, I, I wouldn't recommend doing it in front of your iMac on your desk. Um, probably do it outside. <laughs> now, if you remember correctly, I uh, took this off of the bike as one whole piece. So I'm going to have to take the shocks off of this uh, front wheel assembly before I can even start working on them. Now, I think the first thing we're going to do is take the um, plastic wheel guard trim thing off and so I can, well, avoid breaking it. And then I'm going to take the brake calipers off uh, with all the brake pipes and everything like that and then take the wheel off of the shocks and yeah, go from there. Okay, uh, I was just about to take the uh, wheel guard off and this side doesn't have a bolt in there and the other side seems to have the nut on the outside which I find a bit strange, not sure if it's supposed to be like that. Uh, there's also a crack in it if you can see that. I'm going to pop the brake caliper off uh, this side. Yep, so I need a spanner. That one? Nope. Nope. <laughs> Okay, it's a 14 for me, in case anyone was running. Righty there. Wow. Wasn't expecting that to come out that easily. Oh, is this where I get brake fluid everywhere? Nope, because there's none in it. <laughs> okay. well. da, 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 da. Okay, okay. 
Now, of course, it wasn't going to be that easy, was it? No. It's because there's a slight lip on the disc from where it's worn. Okay, I'm just going to take the speedo cable off. Uh, because that's in my way at the minute. And also a bit. Uh, it's not. It's not damaged, but that's supposed to be on the other side of that. There we go. Cool. That's one thing out of the way. All right. So this will this will get around the disc, but it won't come off the disc at the minute. Gonna try a little bit of an unconventional method, as I normally do. Hey, we'll reuse those pads. Yeah, plenty of life left on them. Joking. I guess uh, let's do the other side. Just pop the brake line bolt out. These are coming out surprisingly well. Suspiciously well. A little bit of brake fluid coming out of there. I will be getting new brake lines um, because these have been sat and they're so old. Brakes are probably the second most important thing on a motorbike. The first one being tyres. Mm. In all fairness, brakes and tyres, they go hand in hand. They're both very, very important. These tyres are, well, this one I think is 20, 23 years old. No, more than that, 33 years old. Whatever 1991 is. 34 years old, yeah. So it'll be like, it'll be more like plastic than rubber. <laughs> There we go. Right, two brake calipers off and ready for refurb. Wheel spins a lot better now. <laughs> there you go, brake fluid makes really good uh, tyre shine. Joking, don't do that. Right, now I'm going to try and take the wheel off. So loosen that clamp bolt, loosen that clamp bolt, and then. Oh, I need to go to the garage and borrow that tool again. Okay, maybe I should just buy, I need to buy myself that tool, don't I? The large hex key. Okay, so I got slightly distracted from taking the wheel off of the shock absorbers and decided to take the uh, front mug guard uh, trim fairing off of the shock absorber first because I didn't have the tool to take the wheel off anyway. What was that? <laughs> So there's a plate that goes on the inside. Pop the other side off. Okay, so to get this out, I found the right size Allen key to go on the back of the screw. However, there's a nylock nut in there, which obviously you can't get a socket round because it's the same size as the hole. So I guess we just have to try and wedge something in there to try and undo it. But I just can't see this. Well, that's just dumb. Whoever did that is dumb. Oh, we have movement. I'm pretty sure that's not the factory fitting. If it is, then someone at Kawasaki must have been, I don't know, under the influence when he came up with that idea. That's just awkward. But I managed to get it out. Thankfully, well, I say I haven't quite got it out yet, obviously, because you're still watching me get it out. <laughs> That's one idiot that came up with that idea. Zero. Oh, it's nice to know there are other idiots on this planet. With all those screws out of the way, this should come off. Yeah. All right, put that somewhere safe. Okay, so just to make sure that I get this back in the right place, I'm going to measure from that Jubilee clip that's on there. It's going to be 213 millimetres. I should be able to take 
this uh, bracket off and the shocks should just come off the side of the front wheel shaft. I know I'm not calling things the correct names, but um, never mind. We all know what I mean. Uh, yeah, don't worry about the carpet, everyone. I'm in my workshop and it was a piece of leftover carpet from when we had the carpet fitted. Do, 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 do. Undo. Yes. 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 And I think these are just positioning clamps that someone's put on. I don't know if they're stock or not. Um, just to make sure that when the shocks went off, they go back on at the same place. Maybe. I don't know. I could just be talking rubbish. <laughs> okay. So, there's no grub screws or anything in that. I don't really understand what you're supposed to do to get that off then. Hmm. We'll go back to uh, unconventional method. Tap, tap, tap. Well, it's got o rings on it, and that is a bit of pipe that goes between the two ring things. Uh, and there is a hole on the shock absorber where I think that hole's supposed to line up. So it's obviously something to do with. The oil and flow and stuff. Okay. Ooh. Gooey. Ray. Got that bit off. Yoke? Is it is it a yoke? Okay, now I'm hoping that this will just lift off of the wheel. Uh sorry, my hands are coming in grease and I don't want to touch my tripod and get grease everywhere. Look at me wearing gloves though. Aren't we impressed? Okay. Ready? Mm, nope, I have to undo that. Right, so off to, uh, yeah, off to Halfords we go to actually buy the right tool for that. Woo! So I'll just pop out to Halfords. I've got to go there anyway, because on my list of things to do, is take um, a couple of tools back that are broken. Um, that's not supposed to come out of there. So I will go do that. Also, uh, that um, kind of broke off of there as well. They are professional tools, Halford's professional range. Now they don't actually do that anymore. They, they, they renamed it a few years ago to Halford's Advanced, but the Halfords Professional Range and the Advanced stuff comes with a lifetime warranty, lifetime guarantee. So <laughs> I was bought that toolkit when I was 17. So that was 20 years ago. So let's find out if they will actually warrant a lifetime guarantee. Well, that was completely hassle-free. I said, these are from my Halfords Professional Toolkit. They're broken. Uh, can I get some exchanges? Yep, no problem. Absolutely fantastic, great service. Thank you, Halfords. Uh, also picked up a set of half inch drive hex bits so that I don't have to keep borrowing it from the garage. <laughs> Found a very cool leaf that is growing shoots out of it. Just got back home. There we go, lovely. So I think it's this one. Happy days. Right. So, so I need to stop that from turning. Now, what I should have done here is uh, just pop round to the garage around the corner and ask them if I could borrow their hex socket to fit in the other end of this shaft. Uh, what I did instead was just plain lazy. I probably shouldn't have done it, but uh, I didn't cause any damage. Um, yeah, you'll you, you'll see what I mean in a second. If I put that in there, so I've got a screwdriver in there between the, um, what do you call it, speedo, the throttle cable, not throttle cable, speedo cable, 
wedge that in there and then yeah awesome cool one shock absorber removed and the other side should come off well i wonder if i can just lift oh yeah I wasn't expecting that to come off that easily, to be honest. <laughs> there we go. So we just lift the wheel off the shock absorber. And there we have the other one. Excellent. So uh, next up, I guess, is to have a look at the wheels. They need uh, cleaning up and painting. Uh, I'm going to go for a kind of original scheme take on the wheels with the scheme. Uh, I'm going to go for black with uh, polished aluminium uh, kind of spokes and an outer rim. So I'm going to crack on with that. Is this supposed to come out? Am I missing something? Oh, there we go. Okay, so there's like a inside there, you can see two uh, kind of like lips or edges which go between these two gaps here. So when the wheel spins, it spins this and spins the cable that goes in there and tells the uh, speedometer how fast the bike's going. Cool. And the last thing left to do is to get the discs off either side. You know, disco. Duo disco. Ding. Okay, that was easy, wasn't it? <laughs> so the sprocket can now come off. Let's flip this over. Now we need to pop the disc off. Oh, okay. These aren't as tight as the sprocket. Undo the uh, six screws. And once all the screws are out, the disc just simply comes off. Doing tire machine. So I uh, had these aqua blasted, um, got 99% of the uh, paint off, uh, which has revealed some really cool like kind of like writing on them. Uh, unfortunately, the wheel weight sticky rubber stuff uh, is kind of still stuck to it in a couple of places. So I'm going to sit here and scratch that off and then uh, get started with, um, what's it called? Masking, taping it up so that I don't paint these faces because I'm just going to polish them and then lacquer them. You'll see what I mean in a minute. One of the coolest things about vapor blasting is it reveals all sorts of things that you didn't even know were there. So I'm just going to gently pick off this rubber stuff, clean all this up. So all that sticky, horrible stuff has been removed. Now, as you can see, this is quite a dull uh, finish on this from the vapor blasting. So I am going to get some scratchy pad and I'm going to polish it up. So I'll do that and then I'll show you what it looks like afterwards. So I've just polished up this edge here and the outer rim uh, just to make it look a little bit less dull. Um, you can see the difference here between this bit and this bit. Uh, yeah, so coming along, uh, now I'm going to mask it up. So I've masked up everything and now I need to cut these uh, using a razor blade. Weapon of choice. Um, uh, so that they're obviously not overhanging the edge of where I want the paint not to be. You know what I mean. There we have it. All masked up. And that took hours and hours and hours and the other side this is the front wheel and this is the uh, speedo drive connector and i'm pretty sure it's supposed to be round um what do you guys think it seems to be kind of oval shaped so i actually did the front wheel and the back wheel on completely separate days and with the front wheel i took the bearings out first and with the back wheel i left them in there for painting and then took them out afterwards so this is a bit kind of stitched together bad editing on my part but you'll you'll kind of like get the gist of it and that is a fan because i was hot okay circuit pliers 
Uh, yeah. Now to come. Oh, that is minging. The other side has the uh, speedo cable doobry thing in it. So another circlip. Take that out. And that comes out. Which reveals the bearing which we can again tap out from the other side. Once I got the bearings tapped out, I've now masked it up ready for paint. And that took me so much time, like doing these strips and cutting them with a razor blade and making sure the edges are perfect, sticking this around here. Now the back wheel was a bit easier because there was more of a lip, whereas this didn't have a lip, just had a line where the black meets the not black. <laughs> right, so let's get the primer out and give it a coat and then some black paint and then some 2K lacquer. You've all seen me paint before, so I won't bore you with that. Uh, got a coat of uh, etch primer on it. And we can still very clearly see all the uh, the nice writing that's on this wheel. Quackozaki! And the front wheel. Now I've painted the wheel black, I need to peel off the masking tape from the diamond cut face. Not the rim, just the face. What are you doing? Uh, just, I've got to peel off this masking tape before, Do you know, before the paint dries. Do you know what's happening right now? <laughs> It's, it's a... your birthday party. Yeah, it's also my birthday party. I'm wearing a tiara. <laughs> um, Chris is here. Hello. <laughs> Look, Chris. Ashley's at his party. If the, if, if the paint dries and I try and peel the masking tape afterwards, it's just going to... Well, we don't want it. I won't be long. <laughs> what am I putting up with? I'm sure this is very important. It is. Look. Fascinating. This is way better than eating cake. <laughs> <laughs> it's not better than drinking beer, though. Right. Well, in order to get to the beer, that looks really good, See actually. That? It's going to look great. Oh, well done. Yeah. Okay. 10 out of 10. But <laughs> could be done another time. <laughs> well, in order to drink beer, one has to first yes. stop taking the masking tape off the wheel. Uh huh. Okay. Bye. Bye. Uh, I had a bit of a problem uh, with the uh, nib, and can you hear that? Uh, so I'm going to throw that away before it starts spitting everywhere. I mean, I don't think I've got any spits on it, but I'll be lucky. <laughs> there we go. All ready for lacquering. So I will lacquer it and then peel off the outside masking tape because I don't want to lacquer the edge because it can get start to flake and get damaged from when you change tires and just general road wear and tear and washing it and stuff. Um, so you're really happy with that. There's the other side. So you can see that as well. And there we have a nice shiny coat of 2K lacquer. Um, I'm gonna peel off the masking tape and then we'll have a finished front wheel. Now to get the bearings out, first have to remove this circlip. This particular one was kind of rusty and really stuck in there. Now we can actually tap the bearings out. So there's a circlip on either side, don't forget. And then you basically just have to put something in there and whack the back of the bearing to knock it out. And you just, it's just a bit of a try different edges of the bearing, just wacky, wacky, tappy, tappy. And eventually it will come out. And repeat the process with all four bearings, two in the front wheel, two in the back wheel, and you're done. Well, you're not done because then you've got the cush drive to do, which also has a circlip and a bearing, which you need to tap out. So there we have the old bearings and the old um, dust seal. And I have a new dust seal and brand new bearings, uh, genuine SKF ones. Uh, I have noticed that these are dual rubber seals and these are dual stainless steels, but I can't see that making the blindest bit of difference. Maybe even the rubber ones will be better. You don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows. So as we all know, assembly is reversal of removal. Uh, so pop that in there. Tappy tappy. There we go. Once the bearing is in place, we can put the uh, circlip back in. Now I've cleaned this up and it's uh, come out really quite nicely. So let's uh, pop him back in. There we go. Lovely jobbly. 
and then the dust seal goes back in there just pushes in there we go perfect I'm super happy with that and the other side same again tappy tappy Okay, stop. Here we have the rear cush bearing uh, sprocket thing. I'm going to take the shaft seal out and replace that bearing. Right now. Oh. All over my arm. According to the manual, it says remove the grease seal with a hook, which I've just done with a screwdriver that I used as a hook. And then it says remove the circlip. Now, this is a weird looking circlip to me and I can't seem to find the end. There's a gap there, but there's also a gap there. So there's two gaps. Oh, there's a hole there. Uh, that must mean there's another hole somewhere. Okay, I will find the hole. Is that the hole? There's the hole. It's just so much grease in it, I can't see. <laughs> okay, I don't know if I'm doing this wrong, but watch the prongs of my circlip removers bend <laughs> instead of actually removing the circuit oh my gosh okay i've got a plan i'm gonna put them in there and then i'm gonna use these <laughs> oh yes okay it kind of came out oh my gosh that is one mental circlip does it need to be that tough don't know. It's just going to go flying across the workshop, isn't it? Ta da! Right, now we can knock the bearing out. That's not working. Need a bigger hammer. It's coming! Oh. Now I need to put get some wood. Okay, two bits of wood. Yay! One bearing out. And here we have a new bearing that I'm gonna unwrap and tap in there. Just like a chocolate orange. Don't tap it, whack it! Once that's whacked in, the uh, world's strongest circlip can now go back in. Hmm. That went in easier than it came up. And obviously not forgetting the uh, uh, dust seal, grease seal, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I've put a little bit of grease on it just to help it go in a little bit easier. There we go. It's in. And the Kush drive rubber bearing holder thing is done. And here we have a very shiny brand new sprocket to go on there. The nuts holding the sprocket on need to be torqued to 74 newton meters, according to the uh, service manual. One. Now normally you do this on the bike, it'd be much easier. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then on the other side, the cush rubbers go on. Now, I, be I believe that these are so that when you rip open the throttle, uh, it acts as like a rubber cushion on the rear chain, so it's smoother to accelerate hard. I believe. I might be wrong. Correct me in the comments. I don't mind. This is the front wheel uh, speedo drive cable connector. So uh, once you've taken the shaft seal out, this gear will come out. Uh, which goes and rotates, I don't know if you can see, hold on. It rotates that splined shaft in there and in turn rotates a little keyway in there which then rotates the speedo cable. 
the other end of this cable. Um, and this end goes into the speedo speedo. And that obviously rotates at the uh, when the front wheel rotates uh, and makes the speedo go 150. All I'm going to do with this is clean out the old grease, put fresh new grease in and replace the shaft seal or dust seal, whatever you want to call it. I've actually answered the question as to whether this was supposed to be round or oval and it's definitely supposed to be round because it goes and meets around that round cog uh, like that see so there's no way that's not supposed to be round because it goes through this round shaft seal <laughs> if it's not round it's not going to make a good seal is it and all the grease is going to escape and we don't want that so all I'm going to do with this oval thing is put it in there and tighten my vise until it's not oval anymore. Now what happened when I tried to do that, it bent this bit, it made this uh, like rounded like that because you squeeze that and naturally that's going to pull that and that that way. So let's try, let's try tappy tappy. Okay, well it's definitely round now. Uh, however, if you look, that is now curved. Now I think what's going to happen is, when I, because this goes cylindrically, cylindrically, you know what I mean, it go, the shaft of the front wheel goes in there, and when you clamp it, I got a feeling that's going to flatten back out and that's going to pull back out that way. So I'm not really sure what to do with that. I might I'll see if I can flatten that without bending that back out first. I'm not sure. I need like something th that perfect size so I can put it in and then tappy, tappy, tappy on the top. Hmm. Uh, let's see if I can come up with anything. So this is where it actually goes in the front wheel. Um, so I, I don't actually believe this gets clamped with the main front wheel shaft so we should be okay so as you can see in the vise with these components i can nip that like that and straighten it out it's quite hard to do with one hand we're, we're sorted and it also fits in there better than it did as well do 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 do, do. lots of grease Grease, grease, grease. And there we go. Uh, speedo drive mechanism. All greased up. New shaft seal put in there. Yeah. Happy with that. I mean, it looks a bit better, but you don't really see it when it's when it's on the bike. The important thing is it's going to work properly, and it's got enough lubrication in there to not get too hot. And, yeah, happy days. This actually circlips to the front wheel, um, and then this goes on afterwards. Here is the front wheel, and I've just remembered I haven't put the bearings in it yet. So, first things first, need to do that. Tappy tappy. Looks pretty good to me. Right, so next in is the circuit. There we go. Start it. Stop that bearing from falling out. Not that it's likely to. <laughs> and then the seal. A little bit of grease just to help it in there. Uh, where's my grease pot gone? I can see two lids, but oh, there it is. Uh, glove. Oh, lovely. Look at that. Perfect demo. Right, okay, cool. Right, so that's that side done. Now the other side is a little different because it's got the um, drive-in for the Speedo cable debris. So, uh, not forgetting to put this in. So that goes in there. Before that goes in, this needs to go in. There we go. 
cool because that is the drive for the uh, speedo cable thing. Now putting this in is quite tricky because you've got to just about make out where the splines are that meet up with these two cutouts. So probably going to be a bit of trial and error. There we go. I knew roughly where they were. Cool. And I'm wondering if why that bit went oval is because somebody didn't line that up properly when they put it together last. Wasn't me. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm not going to put that on now because I, I need to go get the tires fitted and that's just going to fall off and be on the way. So let's get the discs on, which are behind me. So I'll grab them and then we'll put the discs on. One that side, one that side, Newton meters, 23, and we're good to go. So here are the front discs ready to go on. Oh, they look great. These are the ones I've chosen. They're um, MTX and I just think they look nice with the black and the silver. It's a really good contrast with the wheel. If you can hear a load of noise, it's because Kate and Cleo are building IKEA furniture in the room above my workshop. So that's what that is. Right, so not forgetting, I say so, so much, I'm sorry. Um, it is what it is. So a <laughs> little bit of copperies on each one of the bolts so that they're easy to come off again, stop them from seizing. Shut up! <laughs> I'm trying to make a video! Right, okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do this on time lapse I think. There we have the other side, all talked up, copper grease on the bolts and looking fantastic, ready for tyres. Okay. Okay, so uh, I've just realised I need to pop the sprocket back off and apply some copperies to the threads. Um, thanks to all the comments and suggestions and tips for that. It's going to be handy when it comes to taking this off again for... I don't know, replacement in the future, and it will save someone else a job if it's not me. So the torque setting for these is 74 newton meters. So I've got my got the torque wrench set to 74. Here's some uh, coveries, other manufacturers available. This one is comma. It's all the same, it's just like kind of like a liquid gooey copper. And just put a little bit on the top of the thread. Da, 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 the nut will wind it down. It stops the nut seizing to the bolt and snapping in the attempt of removal. <laughs> and we all know what happens when we snap a bolt. We have a headache. So this is for avoiding headaches in the future. Yeah. Now we're going to do the same. Whoa, that was lucky. I forgot that was only held in by sitting. Oh, now I've got copperies on my legs. Okay, uh, what I was going to say is now I'm going to do the same with the discs. But now I need to wipe copperies off my legs. Right, okay. So with the disc, I'm just going to put a little bit of copper grease on the... Uh, screws before I put them in. Same same reason, you know, to stop the screw from binding to the wheel. With my very cool Halfords advanced uh, torque wrench. There we go, 23. Uh, I need to put some grease around this bit um, just because the manual tells me to. So I'm going to do that, use a little bit of my uh, molly grease, uh, what's it called, CV, CV Lith Molly Grease. 
lithium, molybdenum, whatever. Here we go. Do, 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 do. And then that goes around there. Da, 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 da. Right. Perfect. Oh, yeah. It's coming along, guys. It's coming along. So, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then give me a thumbs up. Uh, and if you haven't done so already and you want to see this kind of thing again, well, if you've got this far in the video, I'd imagine you you, you do, uh, then hit that subscribe button, which is super important because it helps my videos get to see more of the world. So I have uh, viewers in America, Australia, Mexico, uh, France, Italy, or the rest of Europe. It's absolutely insane. So I just want to thank everyone so much for watching and being part of my journey uh, <laughs> that I am currently going on with this and obviously the FZR as well. Trying to get that started. Um, no promises with that. <laughs> Again, thank you so much and I will catch you next time. Cheers. I never really